All right, in the previous video, what we did is we created a basic slideshow with transitions. Now we're going to really spice it up and add some movement in here. It's very easy to add movement in Photoshop because there's motion presets built in whenever there's a motion graphic. Now you can tell it's a graphic rather than video because it's purple. When it's blue, it's a video and you have the options that we looked at previously. When it's purple, if we right click, the options are different. We right click and notice we have motion. And these are our motion presets. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're viewing wherever our timeline is. Make sure you put the playhead over the video clip that we're working with, which is the first one here, which is this building. So let's right clip and now we're going to look again at our options. So we're going to look under the motion presets and you'll notice that there's five options, but there's three types of movement, panning, zooming, and rotating. So let's have a look at these one at a time. We're going to start with panning. So what panning does is it moves the position. It can pan from left to right or top to bottom or vice versa. You can see we can see the direction here that it's going to pan by changing this little wheel. So why don't we just go from, uh, we're going to pan this uh, vertically. So let's click away and notice what happens is as we dry, drag it now, what it's doing is it's moving up, which gives the appearance of the camera moving down. So if we right click, notice that it goes in the absolute position it's moving, not necessarily in the position it appears to be going. It's actually going to appear the camera is moving in the opposite direction of where it's actually pointing. Now you could change that position by simply moving it around that way. If you wanted to go this way, now it will start down and move up as far as the camera move, but the actual image is moving downward. So you can see that. So let's go back. I actually prefer it going up here or panning down as far as the camera. And the other option here is we have this resize to fill canvas. I'm going to talk about this option really quick. Make sure that you have this turned on when you're working with slideshows. It's on by default, but what it does is it makes sure that it doesn't position the graphics or scale the graphics in such a way that the edges are going to show. Because unless you're working with motion graphics and you want transparency, then you would turn this off. But because we're working in a slideshow, we're going to have it on because we don't want to see the edges. So let's go to the next one, and the next one is in Times Square here. Let's right-click and choose a different type. Let's try the zoom. You now have options. We can zoom in or we can zoom out. Zooming in will make the image grow larger. Zooming out will make it grow smaller or shrink. We can also do it from the center, which is what we're doing right now, or we can do it from a corner, or we can do it from an edge by selecting any one of those nine options. And that will just cause it to zoom from a different area. I'm going to have it zoom in from the center. So we're going to click the center option here. And let's have a look. Notice we're zooming in. So what's actually happening is it's scaling the image up. And it gives the appearance of zooming in. So we're kind of moving into an area of interest. Let's go to the next clip. I'm going to right click. And this time we're going to do rotate. And now rotate just basically spins the image counterclockwise or clockwise. You'll see we have the options. So if we do it here, we're going to have it clockwise. You can see it's now spinning. Let's go to the next clip. Right click. And this time we're going to do one of these combinations. We're going to do pan and zoom. And you'll see we have the option to pan it. And let's pan it up and down. Well, actually, let's go from side to side. We'll go from here. Now, remember, if I take this clip and I want to get this you know, much more precise. So if I hold the shift key, notice it will snap these to much more reasonable value so I can get exactly 180. Or you can type the amount in there. So that means that it's going to move it that way, which is going to be the appearance of the camera panning this way. And we can zoom on or out. These options work exactly the same as they did independently, except they're together. So let's have a look. Notice that. You can see that those two are working together, zooming and panning. Let's go to the next option here. I'm going to select this one, right click, and we're going to choose the option to rotate and zoom. So you can see we can rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, or zoom in just like before. So we're going to just keep that with the default, and we see we're going to zoom and rotate. So this is cool. This enables us to create this kind of Ken Burns effect, especially with this kind of movement like here. The last clip, I'm just going to leave uh, stationary for now. And we're going to hit the space bar and now we're going to have a look and watch these different options. So notice that Photoshop is able to play these back in real time 
until it gets to some of these combinations, it can struggle a little bit. Notice it's showing here that it's red, meaning it's only playing four frames per second, but it's loading into RAM. You can see the green there. So when it gets through that transition, the rest of it should play pretty quickly and easily. It's just there's a lot going on with a transition and a rotation and a zoom at the same time. Uh, my other machine, though, my MacBook Pro can play this back no problem at all. But now that this is loaded into RAM, let me hit the space bar and we can actually look at it and we can see our movements that we were able to create very quickly and very easily. So you can see that that just enables us to really very easily add a lot of uh, dimension to our slideshow. It just looks so much better. So um, what we can do, what if you want to customize these options? Well, we're going to have a look at that in the next video.